Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Louise Hubar begins now. The operator behind one of Tasmania's most iconic tourism attractions says the business is struggling to make ends meet. The Tahoon Airwalk, one of many businesses facing an uncertain winter with dark mofo in hibernation this year. High amongst the treetops, the visitor numbers have been a little low. The reality is unfortunately that um, we're only at 60% of where we were in terms of visitor numbers pre um, the fires of, of uh, 2000, January 2019. Um, it's just the perception of the fire in many, in many cases. Bushfires ripped through the Huon in January 2019, destroying much of the bushland. While the forest has bounced back, the business hasn't. Ken's looking for ways to diversify. The large trees around us here are anywhere between 100 and 300 years old, so um, we don't have a great deal of time to wait around for those to regrow. With Tassie's winter event schedule missing dark mofos full fireworks in 2024, <laughs> there's calls in the sector for assistance. Now you kind of see it in a lot of the venues where the numbers are just a little bit lower than they could be, and we you know, we're just after maybe that 5-10% more to sort of get us back up into a good profitable area. And we need a plan, a plan for tourism in the regions, a plan to reinvigorate and to find our next dark mofo, to find our next winter feast. Meanwhile, the government's kicking off a promised emergency department recruitment blitz. The health minister lauding the biggest campaign ever. If you're a healthcare worker, we want you, we need you. Uh, that's the message. The enterprise bargaining agreements that the government's signed over the last couple of years have put us in a very competitive situation in the market. With around 500 vacancies and up to 1,000 more staff needed to fill soon to be expanded facilities, it's a mayday call from our medical system. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. The housing crisis and climate action are at the top of Cassie O'Connor's priority list should she win next Saturday's election for the upper house seat of Hobart. We can have both houses of parliament finally doing the right thing and enacting real donations and electoral reform. Other candidates include Hobart councillor John Kelly, community advocate Charlie Burton and former Tasmanian of the Year John Kamara. A family grieving for 20 years has led calls for the state government to introduce industrial manslaughter laws. Tasmania remains the only state without it, despite pleas from unions. International Workers' Memorial Day is recognised in most countries, including Australia. In Tasmania, unions, politicians from all political persuasions and family members of those who never came home gathered this morning to remember those who lost their life on the job. In Matthew's case, the uh, coroner said it was an unavoidable death. 16-year-old Matthew Hudson lost his life after being crushed by a forklift almost 20 years ago. His family still traumatised by his death. He'd been driving a forklift without a licence and without supervision and the forklift had 14 old faults on it that were still there and all the wrong things were happening. In memory of Matthew and those who have died from work-related incidents in Tasmania, Workers Memorial Park at Invermay was set up to reflect on every life lost. 180 workers have been killed at work in Australia over the past five years. Unions Tasmania want industrial manslaughter laws like those in the ACT introduced. All of the other states and territories um, have either implemented them recently or are committed to doing so. It's a real gap for us here in Tasmania that we don't have them. The opposition also wanting action. We moved amendments to include industrial manslaughter and the government pulled the bill with the promise that they would work with us. We never saw that bill again. The government says it's on the table. We're assessing that as we speak. Melinda Ogden, 7 Tasmania News. Labor has raised concerns about the future of a basketball facility at Wilkinson's Point. The long-awaited Jack Jumpers High Performance Centre is yet to receive approval from the Glenorchy Council. The opposition is demanding an answer whether the government has cold feet over the project. <laughs> As you can see today, there isn't a shovel in the ground. We've had six years of delays and excuses and it's um, 
impacting clubs like the Glenorchy Basketball Association. Often it's just people can't play. Uh, that's, that's the grim situation. We can't put them in a team. So they just get left out. Asked about the location, a government spokesperson said the funding had been committed and the DA lodged. A major Australian aeromedical charity has brought valuable and life-saving skills to Tasmania's first responders. The Care Flight course puts staff and community volunteers through the paces in a free workshop. Bolstering the capabilities of frontline health workers, CareFlight bringing its trauma training to Tasmania, putting first responders to the ultimate test. We want to build resilience uh, and we want to build confidence in um, our communities to know when a patient is really going to benefit from assertive trauma care. The course uses simulation-based practical training to learn vital life-saving actions while under pressure also helping to foster leadership, teamwork and communication skills. Human factors are, are one of the most major influences on patient outcome. Participants encouraged to be assertive and voice what needs to be done when responding to trauma, ensuring everyone can help out before additional medical help arrives at the scene of an accident. Really, really good to know, particularly if, if, if someone's not, an ambulance isn't five minutes away teachers also boosting the confidence of trainees. The most important thing we teach here is to be confident and to be really confident in understanding that doing something is better than doing nothing. Definitely solidified a lot of my knowledge and I think if I went out and had to practice any of the stuff that I learned today I'd be pretty confident. Careflight have provided trauma training across the country for the past decade. More than 8,000 participants have now been trained nationally. Rebecca Gaydineris, 7, Tasmania News. The Thunder stunned the Casey Cavaliers at the Elfin Sports Stadium last night. Down by one point, North West were looking for a miracle. And it came from Seco Salah, nailing this two-point shot with only two seconds to go and sealing the one-point victory. In the women's game, the Launceston Tornadoes could not overcome a massive deficit, falling to the Casey by eight points. Meanwhile, the Chargers women's are back in the win column. Seven-point victims against the Valorat Miners. Proceedings were tight. Hobart keeping a narrow lead throughout the match. Jada Jensen with a strong effort, 26 points in the game. While in the men's, the Chargers could not overcome Ballarat's dominance, losing 79 points to 88. Good evening. Hobart 19, 17 the top four, Launceston, Devonport and Burnie today. Across the island, Lowhead and Bushy Park managed 20, Flinders Island and Grove 19, King Island, Mariah Island, Smithton and St Helens 18, Strawn 17, Lightweenie 11 after an overnight low of zero degrees. Low level cloud was seen about northern parts today with a mid to high level cloud band just off the west coast moving towards the state. The satellite shows scattered low to mid-level cloud over northern Queensland and along the southern coastline of the mainland. Tomorrow, a large high-pressure system will move over the bite as the cold front shifts over Tasmania. Northwest to southwesterly winds, 20 to 30 knots, reaching up to 40 knots in the west and south, with swells increasing to 4 metres. A gale warning has been issued between Tasman Island around to Sandy Cape tomorrow. With that comes a strong wind warning for the same coastal waters to include many inland lakes. Possible showers on the way for Hobart tomorrow, 16. Showers easing in Dover and Ooze, 15 is the top there. Showers likely in Launceston, Devonport and Scottsdale with an expected top of 17. Showery also for Burnie and Stanley, 16. Showers easing in Strawn, 14 is the top. Partly cloudy towards the east tomorrow, St Helens 18, 16 for Swansea, Ross 15 degrees. Tuesday, showers about the west and far south. Now the north can expect an early morning frost. Light showers about the southwest and far south for the very first day of May with inland frosts continuing. Thursday, those light showers continue about the southwest and far south and foggy inland conditions may cause poor visibility on our roads. Please be, please be safe there. Looking further north now, 27 for both Sydney and Perth tomorrow, 26 and possible showers for Brisbane. Cloudy in Adelaide, 20. Hot and sunny conditions continue in Darwin and they're expecting a lovely 35 degrees. Currently in Hobart, partly cloudy, 15, much the same in Launceston and in Devonport. Now, we were blessed with some lovely mild conditions across the school holidays, Lou, but it's time for our Tassie kids to head back to the classroom. And that's all your news for this weekend. Thank you for joining us. Kim and the team will see you tomorrow. Good night.